father is his age. Oh, God, please, no pictures. <laughs> I, I don't want to do that to anybody. <laughs> Uh, good morning. Wow, that's, that's, everybody's paying attention. That's great. Um, welcome to our third sponsored session uh, today from Cisco. Uh, we're very, very fortunate to have Ashit Khan from Rakuten here to talk about some of the work that they are doing. Um, I'm going to keep this brief so we give Ashik as much time as possible. And um, I will turn it over, and we will have some time for Q&A at the end, so um, away we go. Thank you. Thanks, Gary, for, uh, for the introduction. At, uh, at first, it's, it's, it's great to be back. I see lots of faces uh, I knew from before. And uh, today, I'll walk you through what we are doing, Rakuten Mobile. Uh, many of you most probably saw on the newspaper that it is becoming, or decided to become, the fourth mobile network operator. Rakuten Mobile was so far an MVNO on top of Docomo, but it decided to become an MNO on it itself. And in order to make the network, uh, this presentation is about that, how we have made our network and then still making it. Uh, I'll take you back to 2013. So this is what we did in 2013. This you all know. After that, uh, in order to make this ecosystem um, conventional telco players, they made their product. I don't know, I, I, see, I see Chris over here. We did OPNFV as well to, to do open source development of these. And um, this architecture, we, in HCNV, we actually do not call it an architecture. We call it a framework, per se. Uh, different deployment implementation that uh, came up into the market. And uh, the point over here is, as, as Rakuten, we are, we are following this, this architecture that was standardized in HCNMB in, in 2013. And if I remember correctly, in the bond meeting in June. Now, the reason I saw that, uh, that diagram is because of this. So this is Rakuten's ecosystem. And this is how our network um, looks like. So we, uh, sorry. Right, it came back. So for the first thing is, well, of course, as you saw in the title, in our network, we do not have any physical network function. Everything is virtualized on top of OpenStack and KVM. So let's start from there. So first thing is, as we are um, basically a new operator, we do not have any legacy system. We are using commercial of the self servers. If these are servers. Uh, I wouldn't say that you'll, you'll be able to go and buy it from, from some of the shops over there, but these are basically Intel, <laughs> Intel servers. You can buy from anywhere, generally speaking. And uh, on top of that, we have this horizontal, what we call uh, telco software. This is the OpenStack KVM part that we are uh, procuring from Cisco. Cisco call it CVIM. Okay? It's a Cisco VIM, Virtualized Infrastructure Manager. And on top of that, we have our 4G core network. This 5G core, it will appear soon, next year. Uh, let's ignore that for the moment. So the EPC core part, this is coming from Cisco. The whole IMS stack is coming from Nokia. Uh, and uh, the hardware, these are coming from Quanta. I don't know if you know Quanta. It's a uh, Taiwanese server manufacturer. Um, and the VNF manager, point of view, um, I think we had many discussions uh, around the industry, the generic VNF manager, the specific VNF manager. So at present, uh, for the Cisco stack and for, for the rest of the ecosystem, we use Cisco's VNF manager, which is called ESC. For the IMS part, we use uh, Nokia's CBAM, the uh, Nokia's uh, <coughs> VNF manager. But Rakuten's strategy is within one year, we'll move all, uh, all of the VNFs uh, to ESC. We will have only one single um, VNF manager, the specific VNF manager, the whole, let's say, NFB dreamt of, I would say. On top of that, this is where our innovation, there are two innovations we have, that these are coming from conventional vendors, let's say. Uh, the VDAN part I will explain to you a little, a little later. The OSS system. So an operator, by definition, it operates. 
So one good thing about us, as we didn't have a legacy system, we actually developed our legacy system by and large in-house by using a company you know, called Inoi. And it is, when we, I was making the HC NFB architecture, the reason you have an NFBO and OSS separated, because all network operators at that time, they had their legacy OSS system, right? So they couldn't really replace it with a virtualization aware Opera OSS system. That's why we had to augment it with NFBO. But for us, it's all virtualized, so our operation OSS system is virtualization aware. So it, it basically handles all virtualized element. It's not handling any physical element per se. So this is, this is our uh, in-house OSS system that we have developed. And uh, then we have the virtualized RAN, and this is for the first time in the world, we are the first network operator, mobile network operator, who has uh, commercially deployed it's not in the lab. It's commercially deployed in three major cities now in Japan. Uh, <coughs> the 4G VRAN part on COPS architecture. So you have the control unit and you have the data unit. And this is, I'll explain you a little later, we also have a centralized uh, data center and edge, cl edge cloud physical deployment. So this is our uh, NFV architecture looks like. And it's uh, pretty much a multi-vendor ecosystem. You can see you have Quanta. Uh, we use Intel FPGA cards, Nokia's IMS, Cisco's, uh, the whole virtualized infra basically infrastructure, Cisco CVIM. Uh, we on OpenStack, and uh, we have our own uh, OSS system. Now, this is how, how our, it's a, I don't call it an architecture. This is actually the physical deployment, right? So what we have, we have uh, a centralized, what we call CDC, central data center. I'll show you later. This is where the EPC core part, uh, the Cisco EPC, Nokia IMS part, um, and also other security gateways, they are hosted over here. And this is also virtualized on OpenStack. And the gray one is, we have two central data centers in Japan. And Japan is a very disaster prone country. And one thing I want to mention, you, you have seen many redundancy in your life, I'm sure. You have seen one plus one, n plus k, n plus one. Maybe something you didn't see is, let's say this central data center, we have one in the Osaka area, which is uh, the, 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 the center of Eastern Japan. And the gray one, let's say in the, it's in the Osaka area, which is a central location in the, in the Western Japan. If Tokyo goes down with a magnitude nine earthquake, we can actually switch over to our Osaka data center. The network will still be serving. So it's not only the redundancy in, on, on the VNF, in a one plus one redundancy, it's also the redundancy among or between the cloud themselves. Tokyo, the whole Tokyo can go down, but we'll still be able to um, uh, serve our customers by switching to the um, Osaka data center. And then we have edge cloud. GC is a local terminology, please ignore it. It's, it's entity um, group centers. So we are using them for our edge cloud to host our um, virtualized RAN. So you, I'll show it to, to you later. The uh, BB units, they all have been put into virtual machines and are deployed on Cisco's uh, edge CVIM uh, platform. And the only physical thing, I have said everything is virtualized, but <laughs> you can't really virtualize the antennas, right? They are physical poles, so they are physical that I must admit. Now, uh, I think in my previous presentation, Chandra and Ian has explained in details uh, Cisco CVIM as, as a product. Uh, so uh, the way it works is we have different pods, and each of the pods is one OpenStack run, run, run cloud, okay? And you can have different sizes of pod. We dimension our pods uh, according to the necessity of the VNF. Uh, it's just an example, please, um, it's, it's not truth. For example, if Nokia IMS, one element of IMS, it requires 100 servers to host the, host the VNF, we will make a pod which has 100 servers. That's how we dimension it. It depends on the VNF the, that is running. And depending on the VNF, uh, <coughs> the size changes, and each of these pod 
they, ha they are run by one OpenStack uh, instant from, from Cisco. Uh, the pods, they themselves have redundancy. If one pod fails, another pod will take over. The VNF themselves, the, uh, the software part, they themselves have redundancy. So inside the pod, if one VM fails, another VM takes over. So the whole network is designed for at least one failure. It doesn't matter if one element fails, the network will still keep on working. And we don't have to replace hardware instantly. We can wait for a week. That's how the whole network is built. So this is generally how our uh, cloud looks like. So you have pod and it has some benefits. One is sandboxing. If one VNF, I wouldn't say it, after 10 years of 4G, we rolled out 4G 10 years ago, there is any rogue VNF from, from a legitimate vendor. But still, if one goes wrong, it still stays within the pod itself. And you can also enforce different sorts of, um, different types of security policy on different pods. So it has that benefit. And uh, j just an example, I again wouldn't give you the exact number. For, for example, in our uh, central data center, one central data center, you have around 30 pods, around three to 4,000 servers in, in one, one central data center hosting the 4G core network. Now, this is virtualization, in my view, in my very own personal view, somehow a bit complex than, than let's say, straightforward physical implementation. The complexity and the end-to-end -end virtualization, everything is virtualized. How do we handle it? And please do remember, Rakuten Mobile is a very new company. We are growing with a few hundred people. It's not a few thousand people yet. And within one year, it could be a record, I'd say. Because uh, I, I worked for other operators before, much larger. It takes three to five years to develop one generation of mobile network and then to commercially roll it out. We did it in one year. But how we are doing it? The point is, our OSS, we built it from scratch. So. Uh, what we call the infrastructure database, your, your whole country, the whole Japan is abstracted and put in the database. IP address generation to host name generation, these are automated. I'll give you an example, example you would understand. Let's say you have Denver, Chicago, and New York. So we have our inherent lo logic that when you are deploying a pod in Denver, the host names, let's say it starts like DN, then if it's Nokia, then maybe it's NK, and then if it's EPC, then it's EP, and if it's the instance one, it's zero one. So we do not, there is no one, there is no network administrator sitting in front of, 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 a, of a console writing the host names. And this is a full, complete IPv6 network. So the IPv6 addressing scheme is also we have, we put our own logic how to lo geographically, automatically allocate it to, to Denver. So we are not doing anything manually over here. So you have the infrastructure database in the OSS, and this is a pod. And now in this, in this case, in this Cisco CVIM structure, this is bare bone, okay? The grays are, there's nothing, no software in, installed in, the, in this server. Now, depending on the VNF, you may need some numbers of compute nodes. You may need some numbers of storage nodes. So based on that, what we do, and what actually not what we do, we don't, we don't do anything actually. What happens is this. So this is Cisco's, um, I mean, Cisco call is setup.yaml. So this basically it, you write down how the pod should be configured. And the host names that are auto-generated from our OSS system, they are basically written in this file. And this file defi defi uh, defines how many compute nodes should be in this uh, pod, how many storage nodes should be in this pod, what their names are, what their IP addresses are. And these, we feed it what um, if it, most probably Cisco already explained, there is a management server uh, in, the, in the pod. And this management server then by using that setup.yaml that is auto-generated from our OSS system, you basically, okay, let's say in this case, this VNF needed five compute nodes, data processing nodes, okay. 
and to storage node. That's it. It's the setup.yaml, that file that's config file is coming in from the OSS. It fed into the uh, management server, and the pod is up. We don't do much in setting up a cloud. Now, that was an example, okay? Let's say an unit example of uh, deploying or deploying a cloud or configuring a cloud. Now we are talking about, at present, we are serving, commercially serving three major, city, the, the three major cities in Japan, Tokyo, Nagoya, and Osaka, and with a uh, few thousand base stations, and a few hundred edge clouds, and of course, two center clouds. Now, how do I do that? It's exactly the same principle. I'll just explain it to you. I put half, about one hour to make this animation, actually. So uh, the setup file that I explained to you before, as soon as you, yes, in the OSS, you have to actually select the data centers, right? It's, it's Denver, Chicago, or, or New York, wherever. You just select that part. And the OSS system from the infrastructure database, which is di digitized, it creates the relevant setup.yaml file. It's all, basically 80% of it looks the same. The difference is the host name and the IP addresses and uh, what, what is their DHCP server, DNS uh, name server, uh, NTP, PTP server, where they should be connected. These are the differences. And that difference is also, uh, the logic is in our OSS. So you create the relevant setup uh, file and uh, this is what you do. I'll, be, I tr I'll try to be very quick. So you, set, you send the setup, dot, uh, setup file to one edge cloud. The edge cloud is, is, is made. It's same. I just keep on going, okay? Okay. So this is how it is done. I'm not doing much. Well, sometimes things go wrong. We troubleshoot. We fix things. In the middle of, 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 a, uh, of a CVM installation, a server may, may, may <coughs> have problems. I may have to replace the server or do troubleshooting. Those things we do, but uh, generally speaking, we have basically completely, I would say completely automated the deployment part of this cloud. So now I have a few hundred uh, <coughs> edge clouds on Cisco CVM. Within next two years, I'll have a few thousands. So if we don't do this, it's physically impossible for a human being to set up a few thousand edge clouds sitting on a chair with on a console. So automation is a big part of Rakuten Mobile's innovation. And I'll come back to you, uh, show, show it to you later. So once these clouds have been deployed, you have your core system, um, uh, 4G core network inside the central cloud, and you have your VRAN virtual machines running on the edge cloud. From there, to actually make the antenna broadcast the radio physical signal without any human touch. I'll show you the flow later. It takes 15 minutes. It takes 15 minutes to commission one base station in Rakuten. And you, without, without naming any name, go to any other operator. It takes three to five days to do that to commission one base station. So that's the automation part. We are putting a lot of effort from, from, from uh, basically day minus one. And this is how our operation, or let's say uh, bootstrapping the network works. Uh, so this, uh, I have uh, to get a little bit more details into our VRAN, which I'll explain uh, a bit in details later as well. So you have the, your antennas on the left-hand side. These are your, uh, oh, please. So these are your antenna cell sites, and is usually one cell site has three sectors, right? 120 degree you cover through <coughs> by one sector. And uh, we are use uh, CPRI, CPRI, Ethernet, and this is our uh, servers from Quanta, and they are hosted in the edge, edge data centers, uh, and your, the platform is, is, again, OpenStack from Cisco, and KVM, and on top of that, you basically instantiate virtual machines from the OSS 
by uh, what I explained to you before with, with the setup uh, config files. Uh, what else to explain from here? Uh, this should be a very sensitive information, but still, okay, let's say <laughs> as it is written over here. So one virtual machine, basically one BDU, it is covering six sectors. That's huge. That's a, that's a huge achievement. Uh, and then uh, you have your centralized unit, which connects to the, uh, the EMS. We still have the EMS for the uh, VRAN part hosted in the central data center. So this is basically our uh, VRAN part, which uh, let me explain to you in little details in the next slide. So uh, have any of you been to a, a cell site? Yeah, of course, Nokia guys are, had been to the cell sites. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, so um, this is this is a 40 minutes presentation, right? Yeah, so I have time. So um, I also handle uh, Ministry of uh, uh, Telecommunication, and they do due, due to like our they in Japan, you know, you do not auction for a spectrum, right? You get spectrum from the government as a social responsibility. So that means you have lots of overseeing from, from the Ministry of Telecommunication. So they, they wanted to see one of our sites, so I took them to, to sh show them one of our sites. That was live, one of our first sites. So they came in and they say, your site is not completed. It's, it's not a completed site. And then I have to prove, him, prove to them, showing the test terminal that, look, we are transmitting. Um, our, our, our spectrum, and it is a live site. The reason is here. The reason is we have virtualized the RAN part, and this is a conventional cell site, okay? You, you have three, let's say, three antennas facing three, three different directions. Um, let's forget the battery and <coughs> the power board. The main part is here. It's a huge cabinet of baseband processing unit, and that's what we have virtualized. That goes to an edge data center, let's say in between 10 to 30 kilometers away, okay? And one edge data center, it can accommodate, uh, well, let's say a few tens of cell sites. So this is when you move this huge physical cabinet onto basically few servers from, from around 10 to 20 servers, depending on the size of, of, the, of the edge data center, your cell site looks like this. Compare the number of elements. So one, two, three, four, five, six versus two. So this, this is physical that I cannot get rid of it. So it, when you compare this, these two, it's very easy for us. And that's why when the, the, the Ministry of Telecommunication people saw this place, they said it's incomplete. Y you are lying. So there are two benefits over here. It's not only about virtualization. Virtualization, of course, deployment is easy. When 5G will come, all you will have to do, you will have to install new antenna for 5G, but just instantiate five, uh, virtual machines for 5G. The point is Japan is a very densely populated country, right? Finding out a cell site in Tokyo, it would be much easier for me to finding out, I don't know, diamonds or something in, 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 a, in a street corner. So when the cell sites are compact, it's easier for us to find the cell site because we are a new operator, we have to find our cell site. Second is the operation cost. You don't need to go to the cell site. There is nothing to do over there. And uh, just to give you an example that the, benefit, the benefit of virtualization is not only in virtualization itself, there are other benefits also. There is a, there is a rule in Japan. Japan is a you know, very safe and well-organized, regulated country. One person can carry 20 kilograms, okay? If it's more than 20 kilograms, you'll need two person. So it's not that we calculated it. What we have found out that in order to make this, I only need one person. Because there is nothing more than 20 kilogram in this structure. Because you have moved this BBU, the huge cabinet, to your edge data center which is a kind of centralization of your baseband processing unit. So virtualization is not only giving us the, the, the flexibility and, and, and uh, <coughs> uh, ease of operation, 
the ease of operation actually translates to reduce uh, reduction in operation cost. And you should try to reduce operation cost in your radio access network work because it's basically 30% 30, uh, 30 to 70%, right? Generally speaking, your core network takes 30% of the cost, your radio access network takes about 70 to 80% of the cost. So that's where you should try to, try to reduce cost. So this is how our RAM sites uh, look, uh, looks like compared to the legacy. And uh, so this actually had a video. So in the previous slide, I have showed you to uh, show the antenna. So antenna is, is a physical element. It's, it's sending electromagnetic wave, right? But the, the electromagnetic wave that, is, that the, the element, or let's say the machine that generates, can you actually see it? I, is this, this is the RRH. Now, we have developed with our, with our partners an RRH, it's one person. What he does, there is no jumper or anything. He, he carries it, that's what he said over there. He, he can carry it through a very narrow tunnel going to the rooftop. And he basically, there's a hook on top and he connects it through these two connectors behind the antenna element. That's it, your cell site is done. One person. You don't need, need a huge construction company to uh, make your cell sites. So this is something uh, also, um, and you know, some sorts of innovation we did within less than one year. Uh, to uh, re-emphasize one more thing is uh, inside the data center we are using uh, the Cisco SCI fabric. Uh, that's fine. That's many of you, you know and SCI is well known around the world. One thing I want to em emphasize is, oh no. I'm always pressing the wrong button. So SCI fabric, you know, it's, a, it's, it's, it's an SDN solution, Cisco proprietary SDN solution. Uh, <coughs> For, for, for data centers or transport network. So you have the EPIC controllers and uh, we have the pods, you have the TORs. One thing is, this is also our innovation with, with, with Cisco, in cooperation with Cisco, is there are two parts of ACI, right? So you have the network inside the pod and you have the network among the pods and then you are going out of the, of the data center, your uh, ingress, egress routers. So for the, uh, the VLANs and everything that you set up inside a pod, which hosts your VNF, we can do it from OpenStack actually, from CVIM. So this was the development we did with, with, with Cisco that uh, before that, the pods, the uh, OpenStack instantiation and everything was done separately. And then someone has to go in and set up five more minutes, okay, and set up the <coughs> Uh, set up the VLANs or VXLANs network. Now we have automated it and the CVIM, the OpenStack instance from Cisco itself is setting up the network inside, inside those pods. Uh, one thing uh, I would also like to take some questions, so I'll be very quick. We are most probably the first network in the world We are 100% IPv6 from day zero. So uh, this, that's what it shows from RIU antenna sides till the central data center, um, it's, it's all IPv6. Okay. And actually this has an animation, I'll not explain it. So this flow you are, you are seeing, RIU is your antenna. And ESC is uh, Cisco's VNF manager, NSO is the NFVO. Uh, you have another higher layer of NFVO, NSO end-to-end. -end. You have our OSS system and you have the VRAN EMS. This is what I said, it takes 15 minutes for us to commission one RIU. And this is a completely automated flow. No human inter intervent, uh, intervention is, is required. Actually, the person who is, who is doing it is, is sitting, <laughs> standing over there. So that's how we commission a, um, a, a cell site uh, without, without actually any human intervention. And we'll 
keep on doing that all over the country until our network is completed. And that will be 30 to 70,000 base stations are our use. So this is my summary. Uh, we, from day zero, we decided that we'll be a software-centric network, uh, software-centric mobile uh, network operator. We will be 100% automated, 100%. Our ultimate goal is 100% automated. And we will be fully virtualized, and we are. We are, and in future also there is no reason for us, I, at least I don't see a reason not to be virtualized anymore. So these are the three uh, summary for our key takeaway, or our, let's say, philosophy of uh, making a mobile network from scratch. That's it from me. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Ashik. Uh, we do have about seven or eight minutes for some questions. OK, here we go. Thank you for the valuable sharing. And uh, I have uh, two questions. One is the uh, OpenStack control plan. Is, can you e elaborate a little bit? Is, uh, um, distribute control plan uh, among the uh, central data center and the remote edge data center? And that's one question. And the second one is, can you um, share your perspective, the uh, technical challenge when you um, adopt the virtual run? Uh, beside the uh, real time, uh, any other technical challenge in the uh, adoption of virtual run? Thank you. Well, I have the chief architect of, of, of CV right, sitting, uh, standing right beside me in Chandra. Uh, the first question is the control plane in between the central data center and the edge data site. Uh, you don't need to, OpenStack control plane does not need to interact in between the central data center and the edge data center. So, so one of the things we have done is uh, this, because understand this is mobile uh, mobility, and a lot of critical messages are going on. So when we designed this, uh, we made sure the failure domains, the fault domain or the blast area of that fault is limited. That means every pod has its own control plane. Now to your point where you're going is, then how do you manage so many of these across the, across, um, the entire country? The, the thing is, remember I, in the previous slide I, uh, talk, we talked about every pod has the same API. It's the, all the OSS, BSS has centralized from this one OSS, BSS system. So based on the pod uh, location, there is a, the, a pod gets labeled with a particular name. And that is the basis on which the Rakuten OSS, BSS system is calling an API for a particular pod. And that's pretty much how it's happening. Now, the advantage with, to that is um, we, we really, even if one site fails, it's located, okay, some sites are down, but the rest of the blast areas and rest of this um, network is up. Now, that does add a challenge of burning three servers at the edge. Now, what we have done, and this is where one of the innovations working with Rakuten has happened, we came up with this thing called edge pod, which in my talk I was talking about, we only take two cores out of that edge pod for controls. And rest of the server, the same server acts as both a controller and a compute. And that's one of the innovations we did as part of this program. So yeah, we kind of, if you will, cheated the system uh, to still have controllers locally so that our failure zones are localized. But uh, so do we don't have to have this computes over WAN or DCN that, that is, was a technology that is evolving as we speak. Yep, thanks, Chandra. So it's every pod is a standalone cloud. That's the summary. Your second question is our challenges on RAN, VRAN, is it? <laughs> at, um. at present, uh, the ch challenge is, listen, performance-wise, we do not see any problem yet uh, or, or issue. We already commercially launched, right, in a, in a very high-quality market like Japan. And we are getting close to, uh, we got to only 20 megahertz of spectrum um, as the first allocation. We are getting close to 200 megabps, pretty much. 
if you if you ask me what is our challenge in VRAN, I mean, as I own the whole cloud infrastructure, it is the covering the whole country with a uh, few tens of yeah. thousands of sites. Yeah, so Chandra, go ahead. I would I would say that there's two parts. The now that deployment is done, pre-deployment. Obviously, hardware offload, we obviously work with Intel to bring in the Vista Creek or N3000 card, do a lot. We had to do a lot of um, innovation within the cloud to make sure the 30 microsecond of round trip, it, once the packet enters and leaves, all of that is mitigated. We started at 1,000 microseconds. So from where we had to go to 30. Those are done. Uh, so that's a good thing. The, I think the real challenge now is when he, the number of people that is operating is intense. 10, 20 people operating this number of clouds. When you scale to thousands of clouds, even though it's a common API, there has to be a whole tracking system, what, which cloud got updated to what, what version of saving, what version of Altio Stars VNF. Tomorrow, if we have an FPGA update needed, think about the number, the, the auto, while it's all automated, still, some, that automation has to crawl through thousands of clouds to make sure the new software gets rolled in. That is, I think, the challenge. Yeah, I mean, as, as Chandra was explaining, one thing is build, the other one is operation. Yeah. So sometimes build is easier. You do a lot of testing beforehand. So we are in the build phase. So when we'll get to the oper uh, operation phase, when you virtualize a system, you have more number of software elements into the ecosystem. So tracking them, making sure that I'm doing the right update, automate them, these will be actually not only for VRAN, it will be the challenge for our whole ecosystem and how, how, how agile, uh, parallelized our OSS system is, because the OSS system itself is, is, is evolving. So those will be the challenges. For VRAN per se, as Chandra, Chandra said, performance-wise, we, we are not seeing any issue at the moment. Thank you. Are there any specific technical implementations you can share with us about those devices, how you drop from 1,000 to 30? Uh, what data plane acceleration technologies you used? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, um, I will uh, share what is, what is um, you know, open in, and, and already. A. Obviously, this cloud is not running standard operating system. It's running a real-time kernel, number one. Number two is we do know that um, um, there has to be, it, everything cannot be done in software. So that's why every server here has an FPGA offload which is the Intel, Intel N3000 card. So that is, it's in sh so if you think about it, and I'll tell you, go back in February of this year, Rakuten launched a soft, had a soft launch. It was all software based. It was not based on any hardware offload. We could only do what, five megahertz at that point. We could not scale up to 20 megahertz. And so that's another innovation that we brought in. Um, Intel has a, another technology called cache allocation technology which, we, which uh, is part of this FlexRAN licensing piece. We've incorporated the cache allocation technology also. Um, we've also, uh, you know, it's, uh, some of those videos we see use needs dedicated cores. We've come up with changes in Nova to make sure they, there's no preemption in this code. It's used only for VDU or VCUs, exactly. So, so those kind of innovations are what, what we have done. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously one of my key developers, Ichen is back there. Um, so there was a lot of, I would, I mean, this was an amazing project. One year, what a long project. I think about eight to ten innovations came out of it. We have filed patents out of this. Um, you know, so I do want to acknowledge uh, the partnership that we had. And the partnership was unlike anything. Like, uh, it was real time. We were always talking on Viber and whatnot. So uh, thank you. Thanks, Chandra. I mean, um, I remember one of one of the panels uh, in, in Open where where... Uh, I think it was Pradeep that building an airplane while flying. And my, through my experience in last one year, I'm in Rakuten for one year now, we are indeed building an airplane while flying. Seriously. And it, we, like, we need to fix, find out the solution of a problem in a three to five days timeline. So in that, in that sense, it's, it's not only Cisco, I mean, our, our, our partner with uh, Nokia, Altio Star, um, you know, I, Intel. Uh, we we are we are we are really thankful to all of them to the response time we have. I'm pretty sure in, in the in the history of <laughs> in the in the hu history of hu human being, 
no one rolled out a mobile network in one year. <laughs> With like, I, in my view, at least 50% of these are untested technology from before, it was never done before. So we are building an airplane while, while flying. Uh, of course, sometimes there are mistakes, but we, we are fixing it very fast. One thing I did not touch over here is that we have built a testing facility which, which I call Mini-Me. So it is a complete replication of our commercial network. It just, the, the, the scale is smaller. So something goes wrong or something new you want to try or suddenly a new use case comes in, it, we actually do it over there. We, we have a complete replication. And if it passes, we have a CI CD pipeline, it gets into the production. So in order to get, get speed and this to do, do the thing in one year, now we have to do like, we have to cover space, right? We have to cover the all over Japan, which will take place in two and three years. But the fundamentals and, and the basics are, uh, are in place and uh, we, we envision to build uh, on top of this and hopefully and most probably we'll heading into, into the container direction soon. Thank you. Yes, just very quick question. I understand that the whole solution is full stack Cisco from OpenStack, the Fabric, ACI, and the underlay and the SDN. Because we have the same scenario that we want to build a cloud, but it's not a full stack. Let's say, for example, you have a Red Hat as an OpenStack and then Cisco as a uh, ACI for SDN. Do you, what drives you to use a full stack for that? When you say full stack, what do you mean? Um, from OpenStack to the fabric itself, the underlay, uh, the ACI, and then the SDN. Are you pointing towards how would we did the integration? Yes. Okay. <laughs> right. So, yes, Cisco, obviously Cisco is not a producer of OpenStack per se, right? Yeah. They, are, they are using an OpenStack, uh, okay, from, for, let's say, from Red Hat. But OpenStack itself, not all the time sufficient for a telco service. You require monitoring features, you require security features, you require password management features. Those things, that's where Cisco comes into play. Not only Cisco, other OpenStack uh, suppliers, they come into play. Now, how we did the integration over this versatile supplier spectrum is, this is my own very personal view. Everyone was excited, that's what I found out. Before, sometimes you have to force or make an agreement that you have to participate in, in the integration with that particular company who is actually your co competitor. What I have seen in one year, as we are doing something very new and very exciting in my view, it's all virtualized, right? I have seen very positive response from all our uh, ecosystem partners. Nokia, par um, Nokia participated uh, common development with, with Cisco. Cisco participated in common development uh, <coughs> with, with uh, Altiostar. Altiostar did with Red Hat. Th there was, what was, what you see in an open source community, I have seen that inside my company. Open source community is by nature organic, right? You do things because you feel so. So uh, as Rakten from day zero already declared that this is how our network going to be and it's got all gonna be virtualized, I think everyone was excited and wanted to be a part of it to make, make history because no one did this before. So from integration point of view, apart from the technical challenges, there are, they, they, they went through uh, lots of tough time. <laughs> but uh, there was also an inherent natural urge to make this thing successful. That's something I want to actually appreciate to, to all our ecosystem partners. So what you did is you broke the project into very little parts or, uh, pieces or uh, pieces. So we knew the biggest risk was on the VRAN side. So Cisco and Altio Star, I mean, with Intel and then when needed, Red Hat's real-time kernel, all of that. We, irrespective of what the contract said, we had an NDA, like an N-ways NDAs. And we just said, oh, we had like daily meetings and daily sync ups and all of that. I mean, it was, um, like Altio Star has had engaged with this even before the officially the program became formal. We started that because we knew that was the longest pole and that would take, like because the integration of Vista Creek and all this, these are not going to happen overnight. So we have like, even now to this day, we have a weekly sync up with um, Intel. I have a daily sync up with Altio Star. 
um, our weekly sync up with, with Red Hat on the Red Hat kernel, uh, you know, real-time kernel, and obviously our, our weekly sync up with um, in with um, uh, uh, Rakuten, uh, in which all the vendors are there. And then we have what is called Viber groups, on which we talk real time, whatever is needed. So, yeah, when you bring best of breed, best of breed is a theory, and and really to get it tested. And one of the things that Ashik said, the Kiba lab that we have for testing, that is absolutely instrumental or essential. That Rakuten has actually invested in that. Otherwise, this best of breed is a myth, because every time anybody makes a change, how do you test it? To scale, even if it's a you know scale down scale, but it's still scale. How do you do that? Um, because you know uh, patches are coming left, right, center, and that is the most important thing. Best of breed, otherwise, is just um, theory. Uh, like I said, or n plus uh, you know all this plus one plus one will not add up to like something greater than you know, some of them. Otherwise, if you don't have thorough testing. All right, I'm going to give him the hook at this point. <laughs> Okay, we have to okay. get ready. We have another session getting ready to start in about four minutes. Um, Ashik, thank you. I'm thank sure you Chandra much. and Ashik can continue the conversation out on thank the hallway you. track. Um, and I hope you can stay for our fourth session on the new Cisco container platform. Um, Ajay will be presenting in about three minutes, so it's time to get warmed up.